So this is all about choosing fuels and which fuel should I choose? Well I can think of lots of fuels, I can think of petrol and diesel and natural gas and coal and biofuels and hydrogen fuel cells, there are lots of fuels out there so how do I choose the right one for a particular task? So what I do is I think of a number of factors about those fuels and I think of the word teacups and that helps me remember all the different factors. So T is for how easy is it to transport. E is its energy content and you'll have done a practical about that. A is for availability. C is for how much does it cost. U is for usability which is really how easily does it burn. P is for pollution. Does it pollute a lot or just a little? Does it produce a lot of smoke, a lot of ash or just a little bit? And what's the last one? S. S is for storage. How easy is it, is, how easy is it to store? Because coal is easier to store than something like natural gas. Teacups. Now you need to know a little bit more about this new technology called hydrogen fuel cells which currently only exist in some buses but maybe in a couple of years time there are going to be lots of cars running on hydrogen fuel cells as an alternative to petrol. And the way they work is they, they take the fuel which is hydrogen, hydrogen gas, and it's reacted with oxygen to make water. But there's, it's not really a burning reaction, instead the reaction releases electrical energy. And there are some advantages of hydrogen fuel cells, which is that the, the buses or the cars don't release any pollution out of the exhaust. And also, there may not be a need to use fossil fuels, so we may not be using up fossil fuels to make that hydrogen. However, there are some disadvantages, which is that we'll then need to have petrol stations, not only having petrol and diesel, but also having to have hydrogen stored there, and at the moment the technology is just very, very expensive and it needs to be made cheaper.